Yo, what is good? Do you need cardio to jump higher? How do you add cardio? Is it good for your body? Do you need cardio in your training routine? How do you add it to your training routine when you're lifting? Do you want to do upper body? Do you, what do you, all these questions will be answered in this episode. Let's go. Wake up, do it for myself, prove it to myself The person I see, in the future I could be I just gotta work and you know I'm doing that Never stop, never stop, always on attack Locked in the path, never getting off track Whatever I lack, add it to my bag And I got plenty more where that came from And my price is right, I never change, bruh Don't get it done, get it done right And that's every day, that's young life What is good? Good, and we're back. I like to make videos every single week, whether it's a podcast, a YouTube video. So if you're new, leave a review on my podcast. If you're listening, subscribe. And if you're back for more, get ready to enjoy more. If you've been here before, you already know the deal. What's good? So I'm in rehab mode for way too long. I want to talk about what I've learned so far and what my plans are so you can learn from me and you guys can dunk and do anything. That's the goal. That's the plan with all my content, whether it's just pure entertainment. Today, I went on the beach, did a little drone footy, maybe I'll throw it in this video real quick, but it felt great. Plus, I'm learning about cardio and uh, just super inspired. I don't know if you ever watched Casey Neistat, if you guys are YouTube fans. I watched 12 seconds of his video. I, I don't know which one it is. My friend Sky sent me a video, and it, I, I think it was the GoPro 9 one. I click it. He's like plugging things in the wall, shaving his own head. I was done. It was just like so energizing and creative in two seconds. And I'm like, ah, I got to do something. Charge the drone up. It's right here. I charged the drone up last night, used it today, learned how to track myself, made a fun video. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. I want to make a killer YouTube video uh, and out of it and make it like some kind of motivational thing. I don't know, but just fun to do. And so I'm just crazy with that inspiration. So all these different things going on, I had to jump on the, on the mic and do a, a whole podcast about it. So cardio and rehab mode. First of all, I'm hamstrings bum still, but my boy John Binford, I train with him once a week, my new trainer, and physically in person, it's fantastic. I'm learning that my quads, I've learned my quads and calves are incredibly tight from jumping. I'm very dominant that way, and it's also because my glutes and my hamstrings are weaker. I just jump off my quads and my calves, and with the lack of stretching, it's made them so jammed up. So I'm foam rolling like crazy to break up that tissue, and I'm trying to train the tissue into a new way of moving and a new way of just being because it's not easy to undo what I've done. It's super tight. You have to train the tissue. You have to train just like you train your muscles and your tendons. Tendons. There's tissue in my hips I've been neglecting for years, not knowing. I just got tighter and tighter. It's hard to hit those spots. So one, I'm learning how to hit those spots and really trying to uh, get in there and get more mo range of motion. And as I do that and get my glutes and my parts, other parts of my hamstring strong that aren't the injured part, that will start to alleviate my hamstring from getting strength uh, uh, stretched so much. So that's the plan right now. But what I really wanted to talk about was the learning curve that I've went through. So I've, I've trained with John, I think about for four weeks now. And before that, I was ripped. I was shredded. I was, my upper body was on, on, on point. I was in a really good groove, not jumping wise. I was trying to just lay off the hamstring. I didn't know what I was doing. But the point was, I was really focused on just getting in tune with my body, my diet, all these different things. I was in a great rhythm lifting wise, right? And I also can't wait to get into cardio because it all comes full circle of where the cardio comes in. Um, so doing that, when I started training with John, he put me through new workouts. I learned about my hips. I'm learning new things. So my brain is using that power to learn about my body, building that mind-body connection, also putting in a lot of effort so the energy is going down as well. And I'm sore because of new workouts. Whenever you do something new, you're extra sore, right? So the past couple of weeks, my upper body slacked because I didn't have the energy to do my upper body. I wanted to focus my energy on the new training and get used to that. And this week, today's Friday as I record this, this week I finally like I felt like I got back in the groove, but it was a tough couple of weeks. But the reason I wanted to bring this topic up is because that's how training goes or anything goes. There's a learning curve. And you got to stick through that and learn as you go and also prioritize a few things and be patient because if I would have neglected my upper body or tried to compensate and got huge, I would have really burnt out and things like that. But I stayed patient and this week I was like, okay, my chest has been slacking. That's just from my own balance and for my own, under, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's 
I work my upper body because I do think it helps with jumping overall. Definitely the stronger, the better. And it's something that's tangible that I'm in good shape. Not just the way it looks, but it keeps me like understanding that I can do all these things. It's kind of like balancing all these different skills. Obviously, you don't want to spread yourself too thin. But when you look good, you feel good. It's just another aspect. When I see a lot of good food in my fridge, it's just like money coming in. When you're making, when you're trying to run a business and more money's coming in, that's what it feels like. I don't know what I'm talking about. But you get the point. So I felt like it was slacking. I was like, okay, I really need to hone in on that. Had a great day during chest. And I tried the other weeks, but I just didn't have the energy. And I really needed to focus on my legs. And my brain was another place. So point is, just like the book I'm writing with the habits, when you form new habits, when you add things to your routine, it's going to take time. And it's going to take more of your energy. But then it becomes part of your routine. And it takes less energy. And now you do more things with that regular baseline energy. So now my baseline energy, I have the training with him. I'm rehabbing, like actual rehab training, like basically physical therapy. And, and I'm also doing my upper body as well and other things. And now I'm adding in the cardio. Because when I worked with him that last other couple of weeks, my cardio is so bad and it keeps me it keeps you lean. So, that's what I want to get into now. So, first part was all about <laughs> learning something new, how it becomes your a habit, takes the energy and now it becomes part of your workout routine and that's how training goes. So, if you're doing upper body and you start training legs and you've never done that before, it's going to take time. If you're training legs, you're training upper body, now you want to get explosive, you got to start learning explosive stuff, but you have to learn how to add the explosiveness without losing the other things. Doesn't mean you start doing everything at once strength, but it's about transitioning to the mode you're in. So I'm transitioning into this rehab mode to focus on my legs, but I still want to keep as much as I can of my upper body and I want to add some cardio, the right amount of cardio. So this is my transition with this podcast from that first part to this part. Transition with some cardio to get my heart working, which will help my metabolism and my body fat without aggravating my hamstring because my hamstring gets injured if I try to sprint, right? So it's about using the right amount of cardio and all these different balances and everything's wavy and working together. So what I learned so far with cardio is I ran a mile today, one mile, really sh- Cardio has been my worst thing. As bad as as good as I can dunk is how bad I am at running long distances because everything was burst, everything was tight, everything was strong in one second uh, intervals. So that's why I'm super super tight. But I need some balance. So that's where the cardio comes in. But also for my heart, just for health and my metabolism. So. When I was doing cardio today, I did one mile. It took me like 10 minutes, literally like nine minutes and 55 seconds. And my heart rate was an average of 173 beats per minute, whatever it is. 173 was my heart rate. And what that showed me is that even for a slow pace of running, my heart has to work super hard. So that's not good. I want to work on that. And I have now I have numbers to work towards that. But what it does show me is that I'm not just bitching out. <laughs> I am pushing myself to go hard. It's just that I'm that poorly conditioned to that type of training. And the reason I want to add that in is I talk with Daniel Back. So if you go to another podcast and you listen to Daniel Back, Jump science, sorry, Daniel Bach. I always say that wrong for years. It's spelled B-A-C-K, but it's pronounced Bach. Type in cardio, Daniel, Steven, you'll find it. And what it is is he mentioned, I asked him how do I do cardio if I want to dunk in games because I want to have unlimited gas so I can dunk in games because it's really hard to dunk when you have no gas left because it takes so much energy. He said sports specific. Basically play a lot of basketball or do short sprints over and over again like a sprint, stop for 10 seconds, sprint again because if I do marathon-esque type cardio where I'm running 20 miles, that's not the same as a basketball games type of pace. So basically you want to do cardio based on what your cardio in is geared towards. If you're trying to play basketball, do basketball type cardio. So that's really awesome. I, over the years, this is a subconscious thing I'm noticing is I didn't want to do any cardio partly because I I suck at it and it's hard, but also because I don't want to take away from my vertical at all. So anything that was away from vertical cardio, I didn't do, but that's not the right way to think that's too extreme because cardio is going to keep me healthy, going to keep my blood flowing my metabolism down and my body fat down. And the other thing is that I've always dealt with sinuses congestion in my sinuses, in my nose, in my head, in my chest. And today what I noticed is that I ran is that my my chest felt super open. Like that was the first thing to really get tight. Like my legs didn't give out because I'm foam rolling. I learned that if I foam roll before activity, that helps my muscles not cramp. And I would walk on the beach before, before foam rolling. I used to get my calves cramping before anything else just from walking that's how tight they were so I'm like really really working on mobility and breaking up tissue in my calves and my quads so my that was a good news today is that was just my heart today I guess that's good news 
just my heart today was given out first, like my breathing, but everything was coming out. I'm spitting, shit's coming out of my nose, and that kind of showed me like, okay, I think that's why I also have sinus problems because I don't really have any cardiovascular. Like, everything's tight. It's kind of like an energy uh, feeling where it's like I, I, I explode, I jump hard, I lift hard. I'm all like this bundle of such tension, and I need some fluidity. I need some looseness. I need some f- balance in my life to get that lot of oxygen, but also just to loosen things up because I'm too tense, right? So it's great. And uh, the other thing I was going to say about cardio was I- I'm not going to be extreme with it. Like I'm not going to run 50 miles, and I'm not going to do cardio five times a week. At most, I'll do it twice. And those impacts that you're running – especially on the beach, they're, they're going to be so great for your ankles and your feet, and that's a fast movement. Even a slow squat, speaking with Daniel Bach again, even a slow squat is a fast movement, not physically or tangibly or exactly, well, I don't know the word I'm looking for, but when you do that, that's a lot of speed on the, ten, on the, on the, on the tendons, right? So running, even though you're, just, you're not sprinting, that's still a very va- fast dynamic movement for your tendons to be moving. So I'm not going to lose my reactivity or my explosiveness. I can add in some cardio. It's only going to be good for me. And it just makes no sense that I can't run a couple miles, but I want to be an athlete, right? That just doesn't make any sense. But I was doing that for that subconscious reason that I don't want to hurt my vertical at all. So the new game plan is get the hips right, the tissue worked out, get some mobility in there, strengthen all the muscles around it that are weak and imbalanced, and also add some cardio to get the blood flow, the oxygen, the heart rate down so I can do these motions and condition my body to be more balanced, to be more well-rounded so I'm not just go, go, go in one direction, just dunk and then have all these injuries. I want to go long-term, I want to get my head at the friggin' rim, and I want to dunk on people's entire lives, and that's how we do it. So thank you. That's it. Uh, And if you enjoyed this episode, check out the other ones. Please leave a review on Apple if you get a chance. And I love you. More videos coming soon. Leave a comment what you want to see. I got coaching programs coming out soon too. So stay tuned for that if you want to work with me on your bounce. The more I learn, the more I want to share with you. So really enjoy creating content. That's just what I do. Have a great freaking new year. It's the new year. Happy new year in the Jewish world. I'm Jewish if you didn't know that. Well, another fun fact. (laughs) Happy New Year. Have a great freaking weekend. I love you. Toodaloo.